And we're back. You ready for a couple of titles in the Batman family books? I'm always ready for Batman titles. How All right. You? Well, we're going to go with the Black Sheep of the Family. Red Hood and the Outlaws, number one. Dark Trinity, part one, Fathers and Sons. In a flashback sequence, we see the relationship shown between Ma Gunn and Jason Todd slash the Red Hood. And in the present day, Red Hood rescues Ma Gunn from an exploding building. Ma Gunn has refused Black Mask orders to work for him, causing her and her orphanage to be part of a target of the bombing. Red Hood does intel on Black Mask, meets with him, and is offered a position as his second in command. Red Hood and crew target a private train, which appears to be guarded by the Amazon Artemis. So we get to see a bit more backstory on Jason Todd with his time at uh, Ma Gunn's school for, uh, you know, er, school slash orphanage slash criminal and training institute. Yeah. Future criminals of America <laughs> yeah. in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, and, and it looks like Jason has a pretty close relationship with her. Yes. Because he went, uh, must have gone undercover to infiltrate that so Batman could take her down. I think I was still he's still very close to her. Yeah. I think it was Batman or Bruce Wayne sent Jason Todd to the orphanage mm -hmm. at first and then found out that it was a criminal enterprise and then he went as Batman to take her down and Jason helped him take her down too, which was kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, however many years later here he is giving her mm -hmm. CPR on the you know, I mean treating her like a grandmother or an aunt yes. or someone. That's that that that's really interesting. And she even recognized him too. Yeah, so briefly. He must, briefly. Yeah, must have made yeah. an impression. Yeah, yeah. Or or at least she kind of thought she recognized him. Then said, yes. "Oh, you just you remind me of someone I knew years ago." Mm -hmm. So he's not he's not completely compromised yet. No, but here is something I thought of when I was reading it. Black Mask is a relatively new villain to mm -hmm. the Batman Batman mythos. Mm -hmm. And now we have a different take on Black Mask. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Black Mask is one of my favorite Batman villains just because he was kind of different. Because originally he was the heir to a, like a cosmetics company okay. that Wayne Industries bought out. They bought it out. His dad, who was like the founder of the company, died around that time. And then Bruce Wayne decided to liquidate that company because okay. he said it wasn't profitable enough. So the Black Mask really became the Black Mask because he wanted to take revenge on Bruce Wayne. Okay. He was like the only Batman villain who wanted to go after Bruce Wayne and not Batman. And now we get the new backstory that he was actually born into a criminal family. He's still, he's still Roman Sionis, which made, mm -hmm. me, made me happy. But he was born into sort of a mob family. He offed Apparently, both of his parents yes. at some point, which is very different than the, you know, the morning black <laughs> mask who who made his original mask out of like a chunk of his dad's casket. That's what that's what the original mask okay. was. Like he carved that out of his tomb or his casket or something. And so it, it's a it's kind of a different origin, but he still ends up being, you know, the very ruthless, very yes. I mean, just willing to. I mean, he was willing to blow up. An orphanage, which mm -hmm. was supposed to be full of children. Yep. You know that's, I mean that's kind of how the Black Mask ended up, pre-Flashpoint before he got killed by Catwoman because he, he did some pretty sick stuff. So it looks like they're setting him up to be a really sadistic villain. Right. Yeah, he was quite sadistic reading that. Um, and when Red Hood goes undercover trying to infiltrate uh, Black Mask, he, they talk about this, uh, you know, everything will be all right tomorrow, but there was that T.O. virus that was in the mayor. Yeah. So where do you think that connection's going to lead up to? I, I saw the T.O., and I started to think maybe that's T.O. Morrow, the old Superman Justice League villain. Okay. Because, I mean, being my nerdy self, anytime I see... That sort of that sort of thing. I'm not, maybe it's a maybe it's just a red herring to get mm -hmm. guys like me excited that a ridiculous old character named Thomas Oscar Morrow might be right. showing up. But who knows? That would be that would be interesting. But it, and hopefully we will get some insight as to 
what Black Mask's end goal was, putting this virus into the mayor. I mean, I'm assuming that meant he could control the mayor, but to do what? Right. I mean, that's that's my my end answer to have is what did he want with that? And then at the very end, we get Artemis, yeah, who's on a train that's supposed to be supposed to not have any people on it, and you know, Jason breaks in and here's Artemis, who we know is going to be. You know, one of the, yes. the eponymous outlaws at some point. But was she the cargo? Because uh, Black Mask called her to the, uh, called the cargo the game changer. Yeah. But was she the cargo or was she guarding the cargo? Yeah, That's going to be know. fun to find out. Yeah, yeah. Makes me wonder if maybe the cargo could be Bizarro. Mm. You know, maybe that's... Maybe he's sort of intercepting a shipment from, like, LexCorp. Or okay. something that would be kind of cool, but that still doesn't explain how or why Artemis would be right. there. So there are a lot of questions, and and she doesn't seem super happy to see Jason. You know, she says, um, you know, like one more word from you, and I'm the last woman you'll ever see, or yep. something. So it'll be interesting to see if he can really form a team out of that. Well, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> My favorite part of the. Uh, this uh, so far with Red Hood and the Outlaws is we're seeing a lot more fleshed out development of Jason Todd as a backstory. Mm -hmm. And he's been always one of the interesting characters to me because he's always been Batman's greatest failure. Mm -hmm. No matter how much Batman good he does, no matter how many times he saves the city, he's still always reminded of Jason Todd. And now Jason Todd is coming back into the fold in his own way. Mm -hmm. Batman told him you can't kill anybody in this and he stuck to that when Black Mask uh, killed four of his underlings Yeah, and he was saying that was cold blooded even for me even for me to see. So I do like that uh, how, I do like how Batman and Red Hood are kind of building up that trust again, seeing more of what makes Jason Todd tick what made him become who he is but he still has that connection to Batman, and we, he still has those feelings of being a bat, you know, in the Bat family. So this has been very. I like this title. I like this uh, series so far. Mm -hmm. and we'll see how these uh, these two new pieces will play out in the future, and how Black Mask wants to be the king of Gotham's underworld. We'll see where that goal yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like putting Jason, who sort of has that the violent streak in him, pairing him up with a super violent villain yes you know who does ridiculously violent things maybe that will be what it takes to make jason go a little bit straighter yes. in the future maybe to not veer yeah at least a little bit more that. conscious yeah. of what he does yeah so i, I really enjoy this title i think it's going to be one of the better uh dc rebirth titles as we get jason todd back into more of the bat fold mm -hmm. detective comics number 938 Rise of the Batman Part 5, Enemy at the Gates. A flashback sequence is shown with Jacob Kane and Kate at her mother's gravesite. Kate tells her dad she wants to be a soldier. In the present, the Bat team is fighting off the colony soldiers as they escape. Red Robin reads the data on the colony's targets. Kate Kane turns down her dad's offer to lead the colony. Batman promises to shut down the colony to Colonel Kane as they escape. Ulysses shows Colonel Kane the upgraded bad eyes they are ready to target their objectives. Colonel Kane gives the order to launch, putting the innocence of Gotham also at risk. Well, we finally find out more of Jacob Kane's motivation and backstory. He's been kind of doing this all for his daughter. Yeah, yeah, and he's, he's been following the League of Shadows for the government for a long time. Because mm -hmm. we see that file being handed to him Right. In that flashback, which says League of Shadows. So he's been doing this research for a really, really long time. Yes. And he's obviously vested a lot in this. And, you know, he wants... This is this is all for Kate. Yes. I mean, Kate wants to be a soldier like him. Mm -hmm. You know, she sort of is her own soldier now. But this is Jacob offering her to be a soldier on her terms and on his terms. Yes, that he built this sort of. all for her. Yep. This is her legacy that he's created for her. But the way he built it, she doesn't want any part of it, at least yeah. for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's interesting, too, because 
Jacob's done this much work on the League of Shadows, as Batman's sort of leading his team out of there, and he's briefing them on what's going on, he apparently knows they don't exist. I mean, so that's... He's, sort of he's begs pretty the sure yeah, they don't he's, exist. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's dead certain. So it sort of begs the question, I mean, who's wrong? Right. I mean, is, I, it's hard to think Batman would be wrong, given that he's probably right. dealt with Ra's al Ghul more times than Jacob Kane has. Right. I mean, he's met him in person. I doubt, I doubt Jacob has. And it, it sort of reeks to me that maybe this is Ra's trying to push buttons. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he's just trying to give them a threat and then make that threat out to be, you know, members of the U.S. itself. Right. And he doesn't even have to bomb anything. He just, mm-hmm. he waits for Jacob to push the buttons and and kill innocents on his mm-hmm. own. Yeah, that, that was pretty scary of all that firepower and all those targets that they had on that computer. Yeah. That was pretty scary, but... What was scarier is for someone that said the team wasn't ready, Batman was kind of proven wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it sort of makes me wonder if Batman didn't throw that fight against the uh, the colony troopers. Because he, I mean, a bunch yeah. of them took him down, but, you know, Clayface takes out seemingly everybody, and, yes. and they don't seem to have anything that can neutralize Clayface. Spoiler makes a bunch of their grenades go off remotely. <laughs> nearly killing Tim Drake in the yep. process, and you know she just says, "Oh, that was just a just a fluke." I mean, Tim hacks their computer, yes. and of course, you know Cassandra Kane, the orphan, takes out a motherload of colony guys one on one, you know, with with just a few scratches. So, I mean, and Batman's still saying, "Oh, you shouldn't have brought them. You didn't right. even bring them." Yeah, they weren't ready. Well, yeah. uh, I, well, I would hate to see if that was not ready. What's yeah. going to happen to this team when they're ready? Yeah. Because they were operating pretty well, and I, I think the colony's very well trained. They model themselves after Batman, but they're not Batman. Yeah. They're not, bat, they're not the Bat team. Yeah, they, 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 they kind of got thrashed at that yes. point. Yeah, it's like at this point, Batman, just give them their black belts now. Yep. <laughs> I th- think they've earned it. This is the, the level up. Well, yeah. after the fight, after Batman tells... Uh, he gets everyone out. Colonel Kane and Ulysses talk, and they have to kind of accelerate their timetable. And those bad eyes, the bat drones, are getting ready to launch. And now it's kind of like they're going to just shoot anything and everything that they've had pinned down. Mm-hmm. How's the bat team going to be able to combat something like that? Thousands of upgraded drones. Yeah. They can't be everywhere at once. Feels like that's going to be something where they're going to have to rely a lot more on computer skills, which probably mm-hmm. means Red Robin's probably going to take the lead yep. in that, I'm thinking. I mean, this might be his his big chance to shine, because mm-hmm. I can't see them, you know, swatting drones out of the sky or tossing bad rings at every single right. bad eye up there. You're very right. So. I think that next issue, 939, is going to be very tense, and... Um, we're going to see, like, I, I agree with you. I think Red Robin is going to take the lead there because he is the smartest person with genius IQ, and he's going to be able to do something. But as a team, they function pretty well. Yeah, they seem to function pretty darn well. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean they save Batman. you, you got to mm-hmm. get an A-plus in the book for saving yep. Batman. Yep. <laughs> so. And even Clayface fits in in his own Clayface-ish yeah. way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I think Clayface sort of has enough of the unexpected that the colony wasn't expecting. They were yep. expecting guys like, you know, martial artists and ones who think with their brain, yep. not a big guy made out of mud who's just, you know, gleefully beating the crap out of them. And, you know, and Batman kind of says, okay, <laughs> right. let's, let's not take it to that level. But Where does this rank on your Clayface scale that we talked about a few episodes ago? It, it's it's fun. I, I I went into this thinking, oh geez, the colony is going to have some, you know, big electrified net or right. something they drop on Clayface, and that's going to be it. You know, he'll be down for the count. But I was I was happy to see him not get taken out. I was happy to see really none of them get taken out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they held their own, and that's that that really puts this team um, on a pretty high high pedestal. Yeah, that's very true. 
Detective is one of my favorite issues series mm -hmm. as well. It yep. keeps on Likewise. going strong. Yeah. And we'll see where it goes from here. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to take our final break. And when we come back, we are going to discuss Wonder Woman number three and Wonder Woman number four. We'll be right back.